Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the Karo Khan vs Everything speedrun. In this series I play the Karo Khan as the white pieces with c3 d4 and the black pieces with c6 d5 regardless of what my opponent plays. And I want to really try to avoid the London when I do play the white pieces so I've come up with a very funny opening to, um, to avoid going into a London which does happen if your opponent pushes d5 against c3 as we found out in the last episode. I play two 10 minute games in this series, uh, rapid with zero increment, and then after each game, so we'll have game one, like gameplay, analysis, game two gameplay, and then analysis. So I hope you guys enjoy the format, and we'll get into the first game now. Alright, so my opponent's going to make my life very easy, and start with e4, so we get a pure Karo Khan defense, and he exchanges. Which, okay, it's a little bit boring perhaps, but we've created some very interesting positions from some of these. Bishop e2 is weird. Normally the pawn goes to d4 and the bishop goes to d3 to aim at h7. It's not necessarily bad on e2, it's just quite passive. I also think my opponent's flag is Bhutan. I want to say that's Bhutan. That's Sri Lanka. Okay, well I think that's... That might be the first one I've got wrong, actually, in a video. I'm sure the Bhutan flag looks quite similar to that. Anyway, let's go knight c6. I could... Whoa, c4. So the thing is, if my opponent had gotten d4, c4, it would have made a lot of sense. But going c4, we can push d4, and we get kind of a Benoni structure, which is hilarious because we played the Karo Khan. <laughs> um... And we're getting a Benoni. So the idea is to push e5, probably put a bishop on d6 to support this pawn. I mean, if we can push it again, that would be great. Because this knight would be uh, very unhappy. Oh, and e4 would fork the knight and the bishop. But e4 rook e1. Bishop f5. Because obviously the pawn would be pinned. My opponent could go knight h4, attacking my bishop. I actually don't think e4 works. I actually don't think it works. e4. So obviously, if my opponent retreats one of the pieces, then I'll take it. And if something like queen e2, then queen e7. And he's going to lose the piece. But e4, rook e1, queen e7, I can't take because the rook pins the pawn to my queen. So e4, rook e1, he is threatening to take the pawn, so I have to defend it. I think bishop f5 is the only reasonable way. Even then, my opponent can play a move like knight g5, just to continue going after the pawn. And the pawn is still pinned, so I don't think that works. I'm going to go bishop to d6 instead. Just to defend. We want a castle. The move knight b4 is also on the cards to go after the bishop and try and get d3 in. Okay, bishop to d3. I think we just castle. Let's just castle. Um, whoa, that is possibly the worst bishop I've seen in a long, long time. <laughs> that is horrific. He just locked his bishop behind pawns that can't move. We could actually even play a5. Just to make sure that b4 can't be played. <laughs> so his bishop can't get out. I think um, I think that's actually quite good. The only other way would be to reroute his bishop through like e1. Uh, sorry, d1. But uh, I don't know how viable that is. Okay, this is kind of hilarious. So that is the worst bishop ever. <laughs> Just hands up. Hands down. Also, I almost said hands up. I should... <sighs> h6 would have been a good move to stop this. But okay... Let's let's go h6 and see if he wants to trade. If he wants to trade, then um, that's fantastic. <clears throat> he doesn't. Smart move. We could just go bishop f5. He doesn't actually have any threats. We could even maybe push g5 to kick the bishop back because he doesn't. He's not threatening to do anything. Okay, knight b5 is a viable move to go after these weak. This weak d3 pawn. But something like knight b4, he could just go knight e4. 
Actually, knight e4 is kind of annoying. Because I don't want to take it with the bishop, really. So, I might just go g5. Just kick the bishop back. I don't think this is a viable sacrifice. Because my bishop can help defend. This bishop can help defend. My knight can come back if I want. I don't think this is like realistically a good move. And I could even go something like king g7, rook h8, bishop g6, and just completely turn the tables on my opponent. So, yeah, I don't believe in that. Uh, I'll happily welcome it, of course. No, he retreats. I think that's the smart move. Um, king g7 wouldn't be a bad move. The 5 pawn is defended three times. He has three attackers. So, we are all good on that front. It couldn't hurt to overprotect it with a move like queen c7. Knight d7 wouldn't be bad, but I don't see a need to retreat the knight. And to be fair, we do have to try and actually figure out a way to break through this. I don't really know enough Benoni plans, because I haven't played the Benoni, to know what we should be aiming for. But let's go king g7. Let's just bring the king up, just to help secure the uh, king side a little bit. We could just make nice improvement moves with uh, like bishop to g6 or something along those lines. Okay, he goes knight e4. So we could take. And I actually think I want to because now he can't take with the rook because we have two attackers. So he would have to take with the pawn and give us a pass d pawn, which would be fantastic. Um, so which which piece do we take with? Well, if we take with the knight, pawn takes... We could go bishop to g4. That wouldn't be bad. We could take with the bishop, and after pawn takes, where's this knight going? Knight h5 is probably tactics of some kind with knight to e5, maybe. And also, even if we do land on f4 or take the bishop, it's not really that good. So I'm going to take with the knight... I'm going to take with the knight. Just looks right to me. Um, where do we want to put the bishop? g4 or g6 are fine. g4 I prefer though. Just because this is annoying for white. Okay. Knight b5 is obviously the first move that comes to your mind when you see queen d3 because it forks the pieces. Let's say knight b5, queen d2. Do we actually want to take the bishop though? I'm not sure. We could go bishop b4 actually. That looks really nice. And attack the rook. And then put the bishop on c3 to attack this rook. And then put the knight on b5. That looks fantastic. We can go f6 to secure the e5 pawn. Or we could just take the knight to relieve the pressure. But the point is we can throw our pieces into my opponent's position. And I'm sure that even if tactics don't somehow go our way, which is a very high likelihood because of the amount of pressure we will, ha we will have. Um, but even... Oh, he's just going to give us the rook. Well, I'm going to take the rook. I was going to say we'll at least have incredible positional pressure. But um, yeah, that's just a free exchange. So let's, let's go f6 just to secure e5. So our rook and knight no longer need to protect it. And this um, this pawn structure looks quite weakening for my king. But there's two things that are going my way. Firstly, is that white has no attack. I'm, I'm, I'm not under any threats. Actually, no, there's three things going my way. Secondly, his bishop, which should be able to take advantage of the weakened light squares, is stuck behind his pawns. And thirdly, my light squared bishop is nice and healthy and can drop back to a square like e6 or something like g6 to defend the light squares if we need. So that's not a problem. We have no issues in that department. So our king is nice and safe. But how do we break through? Because we might be up in exchange, but there's no open files for our rooks to operate on currently. We could play an improving move like bishop to e6. Wouldn't be bad. But I want to try and make a move like b5 work to try and tear open some files. Queen d6 looks nice going after a3. And if he advances, then we can go for a move like knight b5. 
I suppose F5 is always a possibility to open up files, although I don't want to do it yet. But it's in the back pocket for later on in the game, is my point. Let's go Queen D6. Let's just um, <laughs> massage the A3 pawn. Massage is a word that um, oh, I think it was David Howell kept using in uh, the Norway chess stream, and it was quite funny. Let's go bishop e6. I want to drop it back to f7 probably. That looks like an ideal square to me. Just covering all of the light square problems in my position. Okay, h4. Obviously if we take, then we massively weaken our king. But we don't have to take. We can let him take us and open up the h-file for our own use. a3 is hanging, so I think we should just take it. Okay, one, we just retreat. Like, there's no problem. And now, we are in good stead. Let's take with the h pawn just to keep e5 protected f4 is never happening because we have such a good grip on that square so we're now up a pawn and an exchange and this should be completely winning especially because we can use the h file ourselves. i think it's actually bad for him that he opened it okay we can take with the g pawn or the e pawn obviously we need to take this uh, because otherwise he's going to take us Taking with the g-pawn is the principled approach, because you're taking towards the centre and keeping your pawns all together. But something like this, then he can maybe transfer his queen over. I think I actually want to take with the e-pawn, because I want to put the knight on e5, maybe. Or b5. What? Oh, I missed that. He's opening up his queen. I guess that was going to happen regardless of what we did, but uh, f5 should shut that down. Because our bishop controls that square. He can't get it in anymore. We control d4, so that's not an issue. We have knight b5 in our back pocket. The bishop is under attack. And this pawn cluster is actually difficult to break through. We can even go for a move like king g6 at some point, just to keep holding this together. It looks scary, but to be fair, even if the queen did manage to infiltrate somehow, we probably would have been okay. Hmm, maybe. Like, we might have been able to run our king through the centre somehow. Although it probably would have been some kind of perpetual. So that's a good resource for my opponent to go for. Um, but yeah, this seems kind of like a done deal. Because we have too many threats. That's a cool move. So his point is, he's attacking g5. And if we take queen takes... Then he renews this threat on the light squares, but I don't want to take him. I could take on e5 to attack the queen, but I think take it going to knight b4, going to knight b4, playing knight b4, is the simple move just to get rid of the problem. If you take on d4, then we take the bishop and we fork this there's no queen d7 because our bishop controls that square even if knight g5 gets played it's not the end of the world queen f3 is a good move though so he wants to come into h5 and g5 is you know under attack we could go king g6 to stop the queen from infiltrating obviously we could take this but then this is kind of scary i don't like it so i think king g6 King g6, bishop here. My god, my opponent is playing some nice moves. We might be able to do this. We could go rook h8 at some point. The bishop's still hanging. But we're already up a good amount of material. I'm just trying not to get mated now. Fair play to my opponent. I also am on one minute. And there's no increment, so... I might have to be kind of quiet now while I figure this out so that I don't get checkmated because that would not be good. That is um, your chess tip for the day. Don't get checkmated because it wouldn't be good. If he takes, I think I need to push because I don't want to allow the queen in like this. No, I can't allow that. Mm, that doesn't look right. Let's take... Don't know if this was the best idea, but... Uh, 
Uh, my opponent's creating some really nice chances. Mm -mm, not happy. Really not happy. This is actually really tough to defend. That doesn't look right. That looks wrong. He is threatening queen g4. Let's block the bishop out. If you want to take my rook, then go for it. I don't care. I'm up a lot of material. I played d3 to block his bishop's scope. I'm on such low time, though. And remember, there's no increment, which um, is not good. We might be able to hold, though. f6 is weak. Queen h4, rook f8. Should be able to survive. Queen h4, rook f8, queen e7, um, knight c6. Queen b7. Uh, queen c5 check. White could get in a bit of trouble there. Sorry, I know I just calculated that in my head without telling you what I was thinking, but... Um... Oh my god, I I need to move. I really just need to move. What am I doing? I need to get my queen onto the uh, checking diagonal. That's what I need to do. I need to try and create counterplay quickly, because I don't have time to calculate this all through. Fair play to my opponent. He's creating some fantastic counterplay. So good job to him. You know, f4 might be a move in some positions from us to uh, go after his queen. Which could be kind of crazy, but I think queen b2 is my next move. To try and go queen d4. So if we can force the king to the h file, then we should win. I might. Uh, I, I, I can't pre move it. Because he might do something weird, like taking on d3. And obviously, then I have to take back. But then we can. If bishop d3, knight d3, queen d3, queen c5 check, then we should be good. But even then, it's not easy with no time. It would be easy if I had time, but I don't. Oh, no. No increment was a big mistake. It really was. Someone literally suggested in the comments doing 10-5. So I'd have time 5 second increment. I can't even give a check here because the knight controls that square. Okay, you hung the knight. Let's go. Go on, king h1, king h1. Please, 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 please. If rook here push, the queen can take here. If rook f2, I might go king g5. Wait, rook f2, f4. Rook f2, f4. Uh, then queen h4. I can't go rook h8 because of queen f6. Let's go! Oh my god. Thank you. Thank you, my opponent. Thank you so much. Irfan, I am your biggest fan. I'm your biggest fan. If queen here, um, g3 should win the game. Because it traps the king in the corner because our queen cuts off g1. Oh my god, that was dramatic. That was so unnecessarily dramatic. But, um, to be fair, playing with no increment does make things a bit more interesting, because it makes things harder on my end. Because I am not good in these time scrambles at all. Like, I'm really not. So, oh, that got my heart racing a bit, not gonna lie. Not even gonna lie to you. A little bit shaky. Opponent abandons the game, we win. That was a weird game. Oh my god. If you enjoyed that, then uh, show some love, please. Um, let's get into the game analysis. Wow, that was kind of crazy. Okay, <laughs> that game was incredibly scuffed. Uh, le oh, let me change the layout real quick. There you go. Nothing but the best on the Chess Centurion channel, layout-wise. I, I had 75.5% accuracy. My opponent was 617 
And White did get a couple winning positions later in the game, but we'll see exactly where they came. This is a strange opening though, because after d5, typically you don't take. I mean, you can take, but knight c3 and the two knight attack is the main idea of this opening. But ed5, cd5, bishop e2 is just weird, because here typically the setup is, unless you play a pan of with uh, c4, which is kind of its own thing. The setup is normally something like this, maybe h3, uh, e6, c3, bishop d6, castle, castle, maybe bishop g5. But this is kind of a typical exchange Karo Khan setup, but my opponent goes bishop e2, knight f6, castle, knight c6, c4, and yeah, c4 is just an inaccurate move. You need to go d4, like you just need to, because after c4, then you allow me to go to d4. Now, why wouldn't I go d4 here? Here it's not good because I'm overextending and moves like c3 can challenge my pawn at an opportune moment. But it's also just unnecessary for me to be moving it forward like this. The computer likes bishop b5, knight c6, d3, and you're just gonna develop very nicely as the white pieces. And eventually you are gonna put some pressure on this pawn, I'm sure. Um, e5, if e5 is played to protect it, then e5 becomes a weakness anyway. But after c4, d4, uh, white's position gets a bit constrained now. It's, it's difficult for white to really move. b3, oh, d3 just traps the bishop. d3 just traps the bishop. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm actually an idiot. Oh my god. And I'm 2000 ELO as well. Like, this is um, a speedrun account, obviously. Yeah, the move here for white is d3 to stop me from pushing. Or rook e1, and after d3, bishop f1. Then d3 is a bit of an overextension. But yeah, b3 just blunders, and I completely miss it. Bishop d3. And yeah, e5, sorry, e4 was definitely a mistake, which is why I didn't play it. And the computer agrees. Because after rook e1, which I think is the only move... Oh, you could take knight takes and then go rook e1. Queen e1 is also playable. Because of bishop a3. Wow. That's interesting. Whoa, this is actually really interesting. Bishop a3, queen e6, knight g5. Queen f5. And then knight e4. Interesting line. But yeah, bishop d3... Bishop d6 is the best move because I need to castle first. Bishop c2. Here I can push e4 apparently. But then you get the same you get the same thing. So I, or just rook e1 straight away. So I didn't want to do that. I thought I want to maintain my massive center and just play the position. d3, push a5. Like I explained, I wanted to stop any like any hope of white ever breaking out his bishop. But to be fair, later on in the game, when my opponent sacrificed a couple pawns on the king side, which is very, very smart of him, his bishop did come alive a bit. But rook e8, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4. And I think the computer approves of my g5 move. It actually likes it, yeah. Bishop g3. King g7 is fine. Okay, we didn't have to take this knight. But I think it's a good move. Takes, takes. Drop the bishop to g4. I don't think it really matters where the bishop goes. g6 is fine. You can probably even drop about to d7, but I thought I'd just pose the question to white. Queen d3. And yeah, I did consider knight b4, which is a good move, but bishop b4 is the best. And my plan here was, say, uh, rook e d1. Bishop c3, something like rook a b1. And then I can play a move like f6, maybe, or a move like knight b5 to go after the queen and the bishop and the a2 pawn and i mean i'm just suffocating the white position right like this is horrific to try and play queen e2 bishop f3 you can't take with the queen's bishop hangs so gf3 um knight, i can just take the pawn on a2 if i want i can go queen c8 to get into h3 it's just horrible I can even go queen f6 or h5 to try and trap the bishop. 
So I was very happy with this idea. And my opponent goes a3, just giving the rook up. Bishop e1, rook e1, f6, just trying to secure my position so that I don't have to look after the e5 pawn. Knight d2, queen d6, f3, bishop e6. H4 was weird. Now f4 is actually the best move in this position. And so taking with the e pawn, e5, is actually an issue. Because my queen's under attack, so I can't push f5. Fe5, queen g6, king f8. I think I'm just getting perpetualed. Yeah, because I can't block because my queen hangs. So it's just perpetual check. So fair play for my opponent for finding this idea. Here I would have to take with the g pawn. Bishop f4 again trying to do this. Crazy stuff. And then it's best for me to take on a3 to try and play knight b4. Yeah, my opponent goes h4, I take on a3, hg5, hg5, f4. Great idea, great idea. And taking with either pawn is fine. I take with the e pawn, e5, and you have to play f5. You can play knight e5, but I was worried about queen 2 h7 and rook e5. If rook e5, f e5, queen g6, king f8, I guess I'm actually okay. Somehow. But it's better to go queen to h7, king f8. And then you just go bishop f2 and say that you're good. If queen e7, queen h8, king f7, queen h7. Oh, it's just perpetual check. Unless I drop the bishop back. And then, yeah, I, I still don't know if white can actually win this. What's wrong with this move? Bishop c5, king f7, bishop h5, knight g6. This is kind of crazy. Knight e4. Apparently black loses if he doesn't play rook a d8. I guess because of knight to d6 check. And you can't do that because then I'll take it. Rook e8, king e8, bishop d6. And then it's... I'm up two pawns. But my king is very, very unsafe. Crazy. Anyway, yeah. I go f5, which is the only move, really. Knight e4. What a move, by the way. Like, knight e4 was incredible. What a find. If I take it, queen e4, I was really, really scared. Apparently, I can survive with queen e7. Queen h7, king f8, queen h8, bishop g8, queen h6. Queen g7, queen d6, rook e7. <laughs> I kind of just surround my king with pieces. But yeah, I didn't want to go into any of that. So I opted for knight b4 instead. I should have gone queen e7 first. Ah, yeah, just to protect g5. Knight f6, I don't care. Like, I'll give my rook up quite happily. I can go knight b4, get rid of this bishop, get rid of this bishop. If you want to trade your knight off, then go for it. Yeah, knight b4, queen f3... And king g6 is a miss. I should have taken on c2. Now, I was incredibly worried about queen h5 in this position. Queen e7. And if knight g5, I just take this. Queen h7, king f8. And I just, again, turtle up around my king. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't consider this well enough. King g6. My opponent retreats the bishop. And he's doing well. I need to go d3 in this position. Here I need to go d3. So this is an idea that I knew existed. I think I was worried about bishop f4. gf4, queen f4. And queen g5 to follow. I guess I can take the knight. But here... This is a two result position. Either white wins. Or we draw. g4, bishop g4... Yeah, it, it is probably a draw, but I don't want to go into this. I know I'm up so much material, but my king is completely stranded, and this can go wrong very quickly. So taking on g3 was bad. And it's bad because of knight g3. Oh, because f5 is just hit three times. And if I go rook f8, 
then queen h5, and this time I am in dire straits. Ah, because I lose the bishop. And then my position falls apart. Wow. But yeah, queen g3 is a miss, luckily for me. And g4 is again a blunder. I need to take. But I was terrified here. Like, I saw this line, and I thought I was losing after this and I am losing after this but I have king e6 wow king e6 survives rook f6 then king d7 and I'm winning if king queen g4 king e7 queen g5 king d7 queen g7 is the only move if I go to c6 then I'm in trouble this is some madness. Queen d6 and I lose my queen. But I'm probably okay. <laughs> this is horrible. What is what a horrible position to try and play. Luckily, yeah, my opponent doesn't do that. He goes knight d6. And this allows d3, which is the only move to hold on. D3 blocking the diagonal. Because if I play a nothing move, then queen g4, and there's a pin, and I'm dead. I'm completely dead. So d3 has to be played. Rook f1. Go rook f8, best move. Knight b5. Okay, queen b2 is good. And yeah, he just gives me the knight, which I know technically it's losing for white here, but I have 20 seconds with no increment. And yeah, this is so difficult to play. Bishop d3 is apparently the best. Knight d3, queen d3, queen e5. This seems like a cop out from the computer. It's trying to trade. Because the problem is rook h8 and I'm mating white potentially. g3, something like that. So yeah, I don't know if I would have found those ideas in the game. But he gives me the knight. I give the check. And after queen h2, I was going to play g3. Queen h3 is the only move that doesn't get mated immediately. But yeah, this is game over. Here I probably play f4. This is not, it's not the best move, but just open my bishop up. And uh, yeah, it's obviously game over. And I, I can win this in however much time I had, 18 seconds. I can do that. I can just take the queen immediately, obviously. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But I just couldn't find the mate instantly. Uh, this is the mate. But yeah, there we go. That's game one. Uh, sorry for the dragged out analysis. I don't know if you thought it was dragged out or not, but I don't know. Maybe. And let's get into game two. Let's see if we can win again. All right, we have the black pieces again, and we again face e4. So I'm not going to be able to show you what I, I had prepared with the white pieces, but next episode, hopefully I will. Here we have a classic Karo Khan, and we have a fantasy variation. So the main line is to take, take, and go e5. I don't like doing that. I go e6 to try and avoid the main lines. And my point is, that the f3 pawn is out of place if I don't take. Because takes, takes, and white is very happy. Here, I'm going to go knight f6 to put pressure on e4 and try and bait my opponent to go e5. So I can play the typical French sort of plans. Bishop d3 is a good move. I could take, though. Because if pawn takes, queen takes d4, there's no good checks with the bishop that win the queen. Takes, takes, queen d4. Knight f3. Queen b6. It looks dangerous, but I think it's good. The only way to save the pawn is to take with the bishop. Yeah, can't I just take? Is it this move? Because if I take, then bishop takes and I do lose the queen. That's crazy. But queen d4, knight b5, queen b6 should work. I don't think I'm blundering anything. Yeah, that's okay. All good. So, yeah, let's go to b6. Put pressure on b2 and watch this diagonal. Bishop e3 isn't playable, which is fantastic. I'm sure knight f3 was more accurate. Okay, here I'm not going to take this pawn because we are going to get ourselves in a world of trouble. We're already up a pawn. Bishop c5 is tempting, 
but then knight to a4 would fork the pieces. So bishop e7 looks fine. I would love him to go e5 and allow knight d5 to offer some trades. Did I have knight g4? Rook f1 probably would have been the only response. Yeah, do I have knight g4? Knight g4, rook f1. Knight h2. The rook goes back then, bishop h4, no? He could go knight d4. And after takes, take the knight. Ooh, that's annoying. Knight g4, knight d4. Ah, but I have e5, and it defends and attacks. And then, if the knight moves, then queen f2. I think that wins. Rook f1, knight h2. If you move the rook, bishop h4, and you're mated, maybe. g3 is playable. If g3... Defended by the knight. That's kind of crazy. Wait. Rook f1, knight g, knight h2. Rook h1, bishop h4, g3, knight f3, king f1. We could just retreat the bishop and claim that we're up a pawn and his king is incredibly weak. Our knight can always take the bishop if we want. And then we'll be up two pawns. We'll be up two pawns. Rook f1 is the only move, right? I don't see what else he can do. <sighs> Unless he wants to try and like give his king this square. Bishop f4, queen f2, king d2. Yeah, this looks like the best defense. Of course, we could give this check, but we can do that at any time, probably. Because if rook h1, we can always just go back to g4. Oh, did I blunder? Oh, no, I'm fine. We give this check, then g3. No. Can we just go to c5 and stay on the diagonal? If b4, we can always just go to h5. So, yeah, that's good to me. I suppose rook g1 is playable because the knight defends it. But if rook g1, we can always just go back to g4. Okay, yeah, I don't want to take this. I just don't. I want to keep the queen over attacking. So queen h5 looks good. Queen h5, rook h1. Mm. Oh, that is actually kind of annoying. We could go queen d6, though. Because if rook h1, bishop 2 h4 g3 then we can take because knight takes queen takes oh i just blundered bishop f4 what a stupid move what am i doing what am i doing oh my god what a stupid move oh my okay what if i take Take here, here, going after the knight, queen d2. Do I... Can I sack the queen? Here, here. Knight e3 attacking his queen. Queen d2. Check. King f1, take, take, what's the material count? Not good. No, the material counts are not good. I think I just have to give the knight up. 
Oh my god, what am I doing? I mean, technically I have three pawns for a piece. <laughs> so I suppose I've got that, but... Idiotic. He can always just push e5 if I do this as well. Bishop f6 e5. Queen h4, bishop g3. Mm. Yeah, then we're busted. Hmm. Bishop h4 in this position? g3 blocks his bishop in, and then we can hand go to f6, because e5 is not playable. Bishop h4, bishop g3. He can't do that, because then his knight hangs. So, bishop h4... Oh, that's good, actually. He probably has to go to d2. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're finding counterplay. Fantastic. Because, oh, that was a terrible blunder. Queen to uh, d6 was a horrible move. Horrible. Even if I had to retreat the knight to g4, I would have been up two pawns with a good position. But bishop h4 is an issue for white. Because he can't block with... Well, I think g3 is probably his best move. Probably his best move. But it's incredibly ugly. Because now we can go bishop f6. Queen d2 defends. But this is still an annoying pin for him. This is still incredibly annoying. For white. But it is also difficult for me to develop my pieces. So queen d2... My moves aren't obvious. They're not. I think knight d7 makes the most sense to try and access the dark squares. Then you have the question of my c8 bishop. If I castle kingside, I'm worried about attacks like this forming. And obviously this bishop is going to be very powerful. It's He can't really move the knight still. Uh, because otherwise I would have just traded queens and taken the rook. Here, here. But if here, he can also just take. Um, where do I want to go? I don't know. I don't really want to go with any of these squares. But e7 looks like the most logical. And okay, it's three pawns versus a knight. Three pawns versus a knight. His bishop's not very good. But all of his pieces are developed. However, his king can't castle because both of his rooks have already moved. Knight c5 might be on the way to give a nice little fork. Do I really want his bishop though? I don't know. I think e5 is a move I want to play. Actually, yeah, I probably do want his bishop because if I'm going to go e5, I don't want bishop c4. So my plan, say it's my move, probably knight c5. Let's say rook a2. Mm, take. Queen takes e5 so I can go bishop to e6. And then we also stop knight f4 or knight d4 that way. And the d5 square remains controlled by our c pawn. Also makes it difficult for this bishop to get into the game because if he goes g4 we're probably going to give this check again. And I think, although three pawns for a piece should be level, our development's lacking, which goes against us, obviously. But his king's incredibly weak, which is obviously a plus. And if we can keep queens on the board, we should be able to take advantage of that. Especially if we can get a rook to the d file. Then we should be able to pose some problems. Queen f4. Really? What about what about e5? I don't see the purpose of this move. Queen c5 would threaten to take the knight. But then something like rook c4. So let's just go e5 and I'm low on time again. So I need to speed up. But my opponent is also taking a bit longer on some of these moves, which is great because we're not massively behind. Okay, e5 attacks the queen. Where's the queen going? If 
this queen goes to a square like g4 or f5, then he's in trouble. Okay, I think we go knight c5 anyway. Defended by the queen, obviously. Attack the rook, attack the bishop. We don't have to take the bishop, though. We could just leave the knight on c5. But then bishop c4 is annoying. But if he moves the rook to a square like a2... No, a1 makes more sense now that his diagonal is shot off by the pawn. Okay... I can't go here because he's going to take. So let's take the bishop. And let's go bishop to e6. We've got some nice bishops here. They're doing a really nice job defending and putting pressure on the white position. And his main pawn break is d4 that he's going to really struggle to make happen. We could castle queenside to get our rook on the d file. And since his pieces are all over on the king side, I think I'm going to do that. Oh, but then he could take on a7. So that's not good. Rook d8, queen a7, rook d3. Yeah, then we can just castle king side. So I like that. I like that. I don't want to go c5 to block the diagonal because then the knight gets in and then his position comes alive. Currently, we're blocking the knights from advancing in the position. So it makes my life a lot easier. A whole lot easier. And to be fair, we have a lot of pressure on white right now. Our bishops are really restricting his movement, even if they're not actually posing threats. And d3 is a serious weakness. D4, I think we just take. Although, then he can maybe push E5 to try and expose F7. But our queen defends F7, so that's fine. Okay, queen goes to A7. Let's take. That's not a move I considered. Is it good? What if we take? Well, then c6 is undermined. There, there. It's a good move. Mm. Hmm. Can we do anything else? It's tough, because otherwise he's going to take us. Uh, I think we need to take him. We could push b5, but then the pawn's going to go through. So we should take, on matter of principle, queen here, rook here, to defend c6. And obviously our rook would be under attack by the queen. We could play a move like queen d7. I suppose. Mm. Ah, I kind of missed this. Rook d8, queen to c6, then bishop d7. And then he gets skewered. Yeah, bishop d7, no? And then I win the rook. I suppose knight d5 is a problem, but not immediately, because then I take the queen. Could always sack the exchange if I really need to. Let's say queen a6, knight... Sorry, queen a6, bishop a4, knight d5. Hmm. This isn't simple. I think I need to take, though. Oh. I don't think he should have done that don't think he should have done that. I mean, we don't actually have a threat, because the king can escape. Knight d5 is incredibly frustrating to have to deal with. If he trades with us, then we're good. Ish. Ish. Yeah, of course he doesn't trade. Um, castle, knight d5. Bishop g5. I think that's playable. We check first. 
I don't see how that helps us. Oh my god, I have no time again. Can he sack the rook? I don't think so. It's going to do it though. I don't think it works. It's two rooks versus two knights and a bishop, which is a very interesting matchup. Very interesting. I'm going to have to play incredibly quickly, but he's also low on time. Knight d5 is something we always have to watch out for. This bishop is very stuck though, which is nice. Um, what do I want to do? Ugh. Let's go here. I need to move quickly. No, this is a threat. Oh my god, I'm blundering. He didn't spot it, thankfully, but I have zero. I have, I have no time. Again, this is terrible time management. Terrible. I want to go king h8, probably. Knight h5. That's an issue. That's really an issue. It's getting so much activity. I need to get queen 8 to g5 in, probably. Go after his king, but he has so much time compared to me. He's putting some great pressure on my position. He's playing this very well. Two rooks ought to be probably better than three minor pieces. But with the with the position we currently have, it's not. His minor pieces are way better because his two knights are tying down my two rooks. He's doing a great job, <clears throat> but he's taking time, which is good for us, of course. I also can't kick either of the knights out. I don't know what his threat is. I'm really scared. No, 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 no! Move, 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 move. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I have no time. I can't do anything. Nah. Ah, damn it. That's so bad. That's so bad. I need to put increment on. I really do. Oh god. What a horrible game. What a horrible game that was. <laughs> Let's get into the analysis, jeez. Well, that might actually be one of the worst Kara Khan games I've ever played, and possibly one of the worst games I've played on the channel as a whole. I need to change the time format for sure. I can't do this zero increment thing. My opponent had 67% accuracy. I had 57.5. Like, that is abysmal. That is abysmal. I mean, the opening was fine. I believe we got a really good position. Queen d4, I was a bit worried about this knight b5 idea, because if I take, then I lose my queen after bishop b5 check. But it's fine, because if knight 2 b5 is played, I can just go queen b6, and he has no threat, because we control c7. Uh, knight f3 was almost certainly the best move. I don't know why he didn't play it, but he goes knight g to e2, drop back, bishop d2. And yeah, knight g4 is the best move here. And if knight d4, if I take, then queen takes. So my idea was e5, opening this up and actually threatening the knight. And obviously you can't move the knight because so you get mated. So bishop e7 was a bit of a miss. a4, knight g4. Rook f1, knight h2. We're playing this well. b4. Here I need to play queen h5. I was worried about rook to h1 though. Just pinning the knight to my queen. Queen h4, g3. Oh, can I go in? Oh no, I just have this. And I drop back. King g2. Knight d2, queen d2. And I'm just up three pawns. Although this is actually kind of scary pressure. But I am up three pawns. Queen d6 though. Bishop f4. 
can give this check first. G3, E5. Also, it's funny, knight b5 is the best move, because again, I can't take because of bishop takes. Oh, no, I can actually. So I can go king e7. Queen d6, king e6, d6, castle. Okay, this is crazy. So, yeah, I need to give a check. But I thought that I was just hanging everything, but e5 solves my issues. If you take, I can take and take and yeah i'm good but queen takes b4 is a miss bishop h2 i find the best move bishop h4 check and you can't put the bishop on g3 because i take take and take and you can't put the knight on g3 because i take king d2 is the best move but my opponent chooses g3 drop the bishop back to f6 so that e5 isn't playable anymore queen d2 I d7, rook a4, queen e7, we push e5, which is good. And yeah, we we play this very, very well. We're playing all the best moves. Rook d8 is a mistake, though. I should have castled king side. Because yeah, I didn't realize after queen a7 he had this idea of a6, which was a very nice find. And here it's very difficult for white to move. If he doesn't have... Because if he goes a6 now, then I just push b5. And my rooks are coming to the D file, and D3 is a big issue. So yeah, rook D8 allows queen A7. And after rook D3, he finds this very nice A6 move. Very, very nice. I take queen A8, rook D8, queen C6, bishop D7. And I thought he shouldn't have taken here. Oh no, but if he goes knight D5, I can just sack. Queen b4, king f2, queen c5, king e1. Yeah, no, this is good for me. And if you try and give me a check, uh, I have bishop to d8. Again, I still... Well, my opponent played it well because he took with the queen. Queen d7. Castling is not the best move because he can sack the rook. I just didn't give that serious consideration. Bishop g5 is better, but I don't know. It just looked weird to me. I don't know why. Yeah, this is better though, because again, white still can't move. Queen a6, and yeah, he takes, and it's a great move. It's really, really good, because otherwise he's in big trouble. Rook takes, g takes, queen takes, queen e6. He doesn't trade queens. Here I need to go f5, which is so tough to play. So tough, because now he gets knight d5 in. Now f5 doesn't work because of knight e7. So rook d7 obviously blundered knight to f6, just forking the king and the rook. Better is just to move the king. So yeah, he misses this fortunately. We go f6, but I have I have no time. And the computer says it's equal, but this is so difficult to play. Here I can't take, because he'll just take on f6 and fork me. So I go rook gf7, but look how passive my pieces are. Queen c3. I literally just missed that I can do this. That's so bad. You can't block, because I'll just take the knight. Still had chances, and I missed it. Queen back. I should be swinging a rook over to a7, apparently. And if you take, I just go king h8, and I'm actually fine. You're just po having a pin on yourself. Oh, yeah, I just had no time. Really bad. Queen c1. I try and give checks, but there's nothing. And yeah, I, I'm i just making moves for the sake of making moves because I'm going to run out of time. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I have nothing here. I go queen c1 to try and cheese my opponent. But even then, I have no time. So I would, I'd run out of time anyway. But uh tough game tough game i hope you guys enjoyed anyway um sorry if my energy was a bit off today i just feel really tired but uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching